In the last week lecture session, we had ended the chapter 5 with some operation related to the BJT. Hopefully that all the student still has 70% of the lecture content after a week later. For today's lecture session, we will discuss about the second part of Chapter 5 which will be more on parameters and characteristic in transistor. During the lecture session, I will embed several exercise and example for enhancing the understanding of Chapter 5. Hopefully, all the students will listen and watch this video carefully as to understand the flow of my explanation. OK. Similar within the previous lecture session, there will be several parts of this lecture video where the students require to answer several quiz questions based on this lecture video and this quizzes basically will be as the lecture session's attendance. Okay right let us begin the lecture. As usual, I will start my slide by listing down the learning outcome here for Chapter 5. For this lecture session, there will be two outcomes which we will cover for today. Today all the students require to be able to discuss basic BJT parameters and its characteristic. And secondly, students need to analyze the BJT circuit with any given condition and parameters. In Chapter 5, there are still six to seven subchapter to be covered for today. Begin with the characteristic and parameter in BJT. Later the lecture will be followed by DC load, fixed bias, emitter base configuration, voltage divider, and lastly is the common base configuration. Firstly, we will discuss about the collector characteristic curves. It is generally illustrated by the figure on our right hand side. Saturation region is the left hand side of the graph. The middle and right side of the graph is referring to the active region B to C and breakdown region from point C. Again, the collector characteristic curves give a graphical illustration of the relationship of collector current, IC and VCE with specified amounts of base current, IB. With greater increases of VCC, VCE continues to increase until it reaches breakdown but the current remains about the same in the linear region from 0.7 volts to the breakdown voltage at point C. For further details of the collector characteristic curve, we can take a look at this figure. Base current is almost horizontal with nearly parallel with the VCE axis. This graph represented the various value of IB when we have a graph of IC versus VCE. Before it is too late to mention, the shaded area in the graph is the cutoff region for the BJT at the curtain condition setting. Now, about the cutoff. When IB is zero the transistor is in the cutoff region and just as the name implies there is practically no current flow in the collector part of the circuit. However, with the transistor in a cutoff state the full VCC can be measured across the collector and emitter as VCE. Here we have two figures describing the cutoff state for a transistor. On the left hand side, BE and BC junction are both reversed biased. While, 
on the right hand side shows the ideal switch equal to this cut off which the open switch network. On the other hand, from the cut off, in the figure on our right, when the BE junction becomes forward biased and IB increased, the collector current also increases. VCE later decrease because of the more drop across the collector resistor which is RC. Here we can see that the VCE is equal to VCC minus with the RCC voltage. When reaches its saturation value which here we note it as VCE with SAT in bracket, the BC junction becomes forward biased and IC increased no further even IB increased. Therefore, the ratio of beta which we learned before is not valid anymore when the saturation state occurs. The IC with SAT in bracket can be calculated as VCC by RC. Here we have two figures describing the saturation for a transistor. On the left hand side, BE and BC junction are both forward biased. While, on the right hand side shows the ideal switch equal to this saturation which the closed switch network. Do you still remember about the load line analysis in Chapter 4? In Chapter 5, we will also discuss this load line for DC case transistor. The DC load line graphically illustrates the relationship between the cutoff and saturation of collector characteristic curves. The bottom of the load line is at ideal cutoff where IB and IC is zero and the VCE is equal to VCC. On the other hand, the top of the load line is at saturation where IC is IC with SAT in bracket and VCE is VCE with SAT in bracket. DC load line is drawn by connecting the saturation and cutoff points. In Chapter 5, we also will have the Q point. The DC operating point between saturation and cutoff is called the Q point. The goal is to set the Q point such that it does not go into saturation or cut off when an AC signal is applied. Q point defines the region that will be employed for amplification of the applied signal. In the slide number 12, we will look at an exercise related to common emitter configuration BJT with biasing circuit. The transistor Q1 here is biased with base current, IB equals 30 microampere. Given beta DC is 50, we need to answer all these questions below. Firstly, the intercept point of the DC load line. Then, about the VBB and lastly about the IC and VCE. In the previous slide, we understand that intercept point of the vertical axis in reflected to IC SAT. While the intercept point with horizontal axis is the VCE cutoff or the VCC. So, we need to find the IC. As the VCE is VCC minus with voltage with RC. Here we will have IC is 2 mA. VBB can be calculated with VB plus VBE which is 36.7 volts. IC can be gained from the beta ration with the IB. As 1.5 mA. Finally, 
for VCE is 10 volts. To discuss about fixed bias configuration, it is better to know the biasing meaning. Biasing is an application of DC voltages to establish a fixed level of current and volt. As the simplest transistor DC biasing configuration as in the figure at bottom left, the VCC can be separated into two supplies, for analysis purpose only, to permit a separation of input and output circuit. For the DC analysis the network can be isolated from the indicated AC levels by replacing the capacitors with an open circuit equivalent. Here two supplies which mentioned earlier are illustrated in the both figure over here. The base emitter loop which could have the IB as the analysis target. While the collector emitter loop is calculation the VCE using the beta ratio and KVL. As been discussed earlier in the example, ICSAT in bracket is the intercept point with vertical axis. While the VCC is the point where load line intercepts the horizontal axis right here. So, we can find the Q point from the two as ICQ and the VCEQ. In this slide, we will have one exercise. I think all of you can have your own time to solve it later as the proposed solution is given here. Using the common base configuration here, IC and VCE can be described as the equation below. The IB is differs on the horizontal line in the graph. IC is illustrated by the blue line from the top to bottom direction. The VCE is the voltage colored by the blue shaded area here. This slide refers the DC load line curve characteristic. IC is equal to VCC by RC with VCE is 0 volt. Here is the example of how to find the Q point related questions. Horizontal axis intercepted element is VCE and VCC which is equal to 20 volts. At the vertical axis I see is the division between this VCC and RC and VCE here is 0 volt. RC is 2 kilo ohms. While the IB is used to find the RB. RB is 772 kilo ohms. The DC bias network of the figure contains an emitter resistor to improve the stability level over that of the fixed bias configuration. For the base emitter loop, by applying the KVL we can have the four elements of the voltages. Just be careful about the base current emitter current's direction before started to analyze the circuit with KVL. Here the IB can be calculated as we simplified the above base emitter loop using the KVL. For the collector emitter loop, by applying the KVL we can also have the four elements of the voltages here. Collector and emitter current are considered this time. So, make sure the current direction correct. This 24th slide refers the DC load line for the emitter bias configuration. IC is equal to VCC by RC plus RE with VCE is 0 volt. In this slide and the next one, we will have the example.
I think all of you can have your own time to solve it later as the proposed solution is given here. Here, the exercise requires four sub-question to be completed. The figure on the bottom left shows the network given, while the right one is the IC versus VCE curve for this network. For the first sub-question, we need to find the intercept point in both vertical and horizontal axis. Vertical axis, VCC over RC plus RE will be the point to be analyzed. I see here is equal to 5.45 mA. At IC is 0, we will have the VCE and VCC is 18 volts. This intercept point is illustrated in the next slide. The next one is plot the Q point. To do this, by the given current which is 15 mA, we can have the X and Y point from the load line and the intercepted IB current line. There are VCEQ 7.5 volts and ICQ is 3.3 mA. To determine the beta at Q point, just apply these points in the ration of ICQ by IBQ which later will be 220. Required RB can be calculated with the IB equation here. By manipulating this equation, we finally achieved the value of RB as 910 kilo ohms. Beside all application of the BJT that we discussed before, BJT also can be used as the voltage divider. Here is an example of the voltage divider bias configuration. Here is the approximation analysis for the voltage divider. IE is VE by RE. This value later will be used to find the VB and VCEQ. Using the VB from the previous slide and the VE, IE is calculated, and the result is 0.867 mA. Later this value will be inserted in the equation below to find the VCEQ as 12.03 volts. The common base configuration is illustrated as the figure 4.49. We can see the base is common to the both input and output of the transistor. Both sides are connected to the DC source with resistor RE and RC. At first, consider the KVL for the left-hand sided loop. Then we need to apply the KVL for all the outer perimeter of the network. The VCB is equal to VCC minus ICRC as equation 4.48. For this equation, let us take a look at the example 4.17 here. IE and IB are calculated based on the previous slide equation. Then by applying the KVL the left-hand side loop and the outer loop, VCE and VCB could be obtained. This table described the summary of this chapter so far which based on the saturation, active and cut-off state. With that, I end my lecture for this chapter 5 part 2. I hope that you all gained knowledge and ideas this chapter. Okay, thank you guys for watching NMZH's channel. Hopefully, you can get um, knowledge and benefit from the videos. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum.